Meghan Markle was accused of denigrating Vancouver locals and justice for girls, JFG, when she declined to wear a pendant that the organization had donated, referring to it as cheap. Prince Harry paid a visit to a Vancouver-based organization that assists disadvantaged adolescent females on Monday. This was her second visit to JFG in the past three years. The organization, which was established in 1999 and has been accorded special status by the United Nations Economic and Social Council since 2009, noted that the Duchess has long advocated for girls' and women's rights. JFG presented Markle with a gold and diamond well and pendant, a donation from local jeweler Holly Bartlett, an esteemed Hyla tribe member, during her inaugural visit in January 2020. Co-director of JFG Zoe Craig Sparrow remarked on the comfort and ease that accompanied the Duchess during her visit. However, Meghan refrained from donning the custom-made gold necklace during her visit in 2023. Instead, she displayed alternative jewelry, which sparked conjecture regarding the pendant's whereabouts and called into question her dedication to feminist principles. Analogies have been made between this incident and one in which Catherine wore earrings presented by a bereaved mother on Mental Health Day. This underscores the potential offense that Megan's apparent disregard for the symbolic piece could inflict on the indigenous jeweler and the girls involved. Additionally, Megan's potential disregard for the indigenous partners at the forthcoming Invictus Games 2025 sparked concerns. It is worth mentioning that instead of exhibiting her engagement jewelry, she displayed a pink diamond ring during her visit. Meghan, according to detractors, would have comprehended the significance of donning jewelry, apparel, and accessories procured or bestowed from visited locales had she worked more closely with the late queen and royal staff. This is considered a potent diplomatic gesture, as evidenced by the late queen, Prince Philip, their children, spouses, and descendants partake in it. Concerning Meghan's long-term commitment to the organization, the narrative surrounding her visit is suffused with skepticism, with allegations that she is uninvolved in pertinent work in the United States and uses such visits for photo opportunities rather than substantive engagement. This methodology stands in stark contrast to the royal family's customary practice of employing fashion and accessories as a means to communicate esteem and foster diplomatic ties. Meanwhile, Meghan Markle warned she is stuck in a rat race that's staring the law of diminishing returns in the face. Experts have just started speaking about Meghan Markle's unofficial mouthpiece Omid Scopey. These claims have been brought to light by commentator Matthew Lassa. She weighed in on things during a candid interview with GB News. During the chat she referenced claims that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle helped brief Omid Scopey, the couple's unofficial mouthpiece, with stories against the firm. Lassa started the conversation off by saying, It's an absolute mess. And I think if Meghan thinks she's doing herself a service by briefing him, then she's very much mistaken because this is a sort of whiff of desperation about it. Asa also added, with these royal biographies, there's always one that makes a big splash. And then of course they like the money, they like the attention, and the royal biographer goes off and writes another one, and then another one. And it's very much a law of diminishing returns, she later chimed in to say before signing off. For those unversed with Omid Scobie's upcoming book Endgame, it promises a penetrating investigation into the current state of the British monarchy, an unpopular king, a power-hungry heir to the throne, a queen willing to go to dangerous lengths to preserve her image, and a prince forced to start a new life after being betrayed by his own family.